though, I just want to go ahead and touch on my relationship with Fine Fine before we get into the review of the Apple Tank Tank 3 from them. Um, like I had in the review disclaimer in the beginning of the video, a lot of people probably don't even pay attention to it, but I put it all there to preference that even if I buy a product with my own money or they send it out for review, I always give my honest thoughts and opinions. I talk about all the negatives that I could possibly, I would say, perceive from using the product or whatever from a user-based standpoint. I don't read spec sheets and all that stuff or wherever. I leave that to other more qualified people. And on top of that, the company should be doing it themselves. Um, you should be watching reviews or wherever to see people's thoughts and opinions, concerns, any issues with a product or whatever, especially when it comes to something like a microphone that you're going to use for content creation or just your day-to-day -day use, you should know all the little quirks and stuff like that possible. So you be, should be watching multiple reviews on that product or wherever from different walks of life and different use case scenarios so you can make an informed decision on your purchase because you're spending your hard earned money regardless of the price of the product. With that being said, again, I wanna go ahead and specify that Fine Fine is a sponsor of the channel. What that means is that anytime you use my affiliate link or wherever for a Fine Fine product, regardless if it's for a dedicated review or not, I earn a little bit obviously from Amazon, but what Fine Fine does is they have me in their database for my Amazon affiliate code and link or whatever. So when you buy something from Fine Fine using that code and link, then they pay me a little bit more extra on top of it. That is about the extent of my sponsorship with them. They don't pay me directly for a review or anything. They do send out free products. Like I said, I have my own representative inside Fine Fine that I talk to and work with very closely. Anytime they release a new product or they want to send me a product for review that they notice I haven't reviewed or paid with my own money to review, they send it out or wherever and really no questions asked. They just always tell me to do an honest and open and transparent review. So that's what I do here on the channel. That's why I don't have a problem working with them great co com company over there great co workers over there so thank you so much fine fine for sending out the product now let's jump into the review for the fine fine ample tank tank three so future future squid here i had to go ahead and take down the original post of this review for the fine fine ample tank tank three because initially when i had this video ready to go on friday for it to be uploaded today on monday at 12 p.m because that's essentially what i do as far as my videos go wherever i use a product for about two weeks I do as much research as possible as far as using the product and seeing all the videos that are out there online or wherever about the product. And then on that Friday of that Monday, I go ahead and, you know, post a video, do all the chapters if I need to do that, um, put the tags, you know, description, all that stuff. So when Monday rolls around, it's already scheduled to be uploaded at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, the problem with that is that yesterday or the, this morning, wherever, because it's been so long, um, I saw a review that somehow I missed of the Ample Tank Tank 3 from Fine Fine that a, a content creator here on YouTube did. And in his package, he had a completely different package that I've never seen anybody else who did a review on the Fine Fine Ample Tank Tank 3 have. And in that package, it was a bigger box. It looked more pristine or professionally uh, done or wherever. And it came with the long USB cable and a decently sized uh, XLR cable and I imagine that's from fine fine themselves as far as like their own branded uh, XLR cable because they do sell one um, the problem with this is that this microphone is around $90 and I didn't really think I covered it in the review if I did I had edited it out by accident but in the review I never talked about the fact of this microphone is at $90 so why is it not coming with the XLR cable when fine fine does sell their own XLR cable and at the price point of $90 you would expect it to at least come with the XLR cable because I've gotten microphones in the past I mentioned it before the Movo VSM5 that came with its own shock mount its own pop filter the microphone and the XLR cable for $99 and unfortunately it's a cardioid condenser microphone so it's going to pick up a lot of more room echo that's why I don't really use it and I only really use um, dynamic microphones because my space is not really sound treated and I always recommend more dynamic microphones to content creators because they're in similar cases so it's easier to EQ etc but again I fall back on the fact of this microphone is $90 and it's not incorporating it now I don't know where this person got this package from he said it that fine fine sent it out to him so I don't know if it's because maybe he's in a different country and that's what's offered in that country and maybe in the United States or wherever other people are doing the reviews because again, this is the only person that I've seen with this package. Maybe they don't offer that package or something like that. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just, you know, a creator like thing or something like that and they send him out a special package or whatever or version. I have no idea. 
but now like i said these the k688 was kind of on that borderline of okay i can see people just using the usb port that's why you know it's not too bad that they don't include the xlr cable but this one is more premium and more pristine and professional looking and all that stuff and that's what you're gearing towards well those type of people are going to use xlr because the signal from an xlr port or whatever is always going to be better than a usb port we're getting good with usb microphones yes but xlr is always going to be better in my personal opinion so why not include it in your premium level of microphone it just doesn't make any sense to me and i know with the smaller box you still fit that xlr cord in there and somebody's mowing grass and it's really irritating um the last thing i'm going to say is that there's somebody that covered the ample tank tank three from fine fine or wherever from i would say more of an audio engineer standpoint going over frequencies and testing and all that stuff of a microphone very very detailed review wherever if you're more interested in that i'll leave that linked in the description or wherever really good awesome video wherever is worth the watch in my personal opinion and you should be watching content creators that kind of do that kind of stuff but here on the channel i'll just talk about a user point of view wherever i don't go into deep dives of the mechanics and all that stuff behind microphones and frequency ranges and waveforms and all that stuff or wherever but uh this person did a really really good review it's probably the best i would say uh fine fine ample tank tank 3 review out there on youtube period so again i will leave that linked in the description definitely check it out definitely like i said it's worth the watch so with all that being said here's the rest of the review <clears throat> so future squid here i have to re-record this part because a lot of plosives were being picked up because i forgot about microphone etiquette 101 and on top of that i forgot to turn off my overhead shotgun microphone so the audio was unusable so now i'm going back and re-recording this part so this is what it sounds like for the fine fine apple tank tank 3 with no post processing no audio filters no nothing or wherever it's just plugged up into the comica adcaster c2 only thing that has changed on that device at all as far as the interface goes is the the gain again is around like 30% and the volume of the microphone is set to 100% and then the overall volume output of the signal that's getting sent into OBS for capturing is at 100%. So that's just pretty much it. This is what it sounds like. Obviously, plosives and the farther you get away and the closer that you get, you get the proximity effect. The plosives are not really, really that good. I would say on this microphone, some people um, kind of talked about that a little bit. There's no foam windscreen or prop filter or anything like that that comes with this microphone. So that might be a downside because this is a $90 microphone and we'll get to that in a second. But with that being said, if you, you know, obviously bring the microphone further away from you, you talk to it directly, like looking at the camera and have the microphone angled at the side. So it's catching the side of your mouth and not directly the air that's coming from the front of your lips. You will be perfectly fine. And that's what you're supposed to do with dynamic microphones. Anyways, this proximity effect and getting so close and having the microphone pretty much touch your lips. That is not the way you're supposed to use a dynamic microphone, but people have gotten to the habit of doing it. It's, it's the, not the proper etiquette at all, but you know, your bigger streamers do it, your other content creators do it. So everybody just follows suit instead of learning what you're supposed to do correctly as a content creator. Again, do your research, educate yourself, become a better content creator. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the VSTs or plugins or whatever for this microphone. All right, so now what you're hearing is the VSTs that are added to the Fine Fine Apple Tank Tank 3. They are going to be a background noise removal, a de -esser, and then on top of that, we're going to be running two different sets of EQ curves. One is to kind of bring out the, the muddiest just a little bit down and a boost in a little bit of presence. The other one is going to be just a general, I would say, correction EQ curve or whatever you want to call it um, to get the sound because we need to deal with the echoiness of of this room because this room is not sound treated and what people won't do is do those eq curves a lot of people would try to do something like the noise background noise removal wherever because they have a pc fan or they have a fan in their room or something like that and they are looking to cut out all that noise and what they'll do is like i said they'll do the the minimalist or whatever uh steps or approaches to cutting out that or most of them i've i've heard it from playing video games with people and be having in-game chat and um going into people's streams to host them from streaming wherever if you don't know i do stream over on kick there's always a live stream link down in the description go ahead and follow the channel turn on notifications you know come talk to me sometime but i digress with that being said I've gone into a lot of people's streams and like I said, I've played a lot of games with people and their 
microphone is either on the desk or attached to a boom arm, but it's right next to your mouse and keyboard or right next to the controller. And you can hear every single click and, and clack and just everything like that. And it's like a lot of them don't understand that as a viewer, you don't want to hear that and you don't want to watch something like that. It's it's un, it's unwatchable. And as a person that's on their team, you're going to go ahead and mute them because you don't want to hear that all the time. You don't want to hear the echoiness of the room or wherever. And that's why even if you get a $90 microphone like this one or any other microphone out there, you should be looking to add VSTs or plugins or something to enhance the richness and the sound of your voice and on top of that cut out all that echoiness as much as possible and the reason why i'm talking about this so much and people are probably like oh squid get to the point it's very important to say this because the number one con of this microphone is that it's really sensitive and when you have it on a microphone boom arm and maybe it's on the side of your the side of your desk where your PC is and maybe you're like me. So I have external hard drives and they're not SSDs, they're uh, hard drives. So they have a disc and they're spin up and everything like that. So they make a low little hum or something like that. That's not really, I would say, audible. But if you touch the device, you can feel the vibrations. I have two 10 terabytes of that uh, right next to my PC. And since I move my studio and office around and my YouTube, uh, I would say my streaming and editing rig or wherever is over here, I move the microphone boom arm from where you see that desk fan is to the other side next to my PC just because of I wanted to get this backdrop or whatever for my live streams. So that microphone boom arm was sitting right next to those two terab uh, 10 terabytes as well as my PC and it was picking up all the vibrations that were being distributed from those devices into the microphone boom arm. I never noticed it with any other microphone that I've had and that I've used or wherever uh, and now that I've had this desk in this space. And those microphones would be the likes of the Fine Fine K688 because it has a shock mount and um, the Tonar TD510 as well as the IX Tech uh, IX Mic 001 or wherever that microphone. Um, mostly because those two, uh, the IX Tech one and the Tonar are a little bit more um, metal and bulkier, as I would say thick, heavy microphones. So I imagine the, the vibrations are having a hard time to tr uh, travel to the capsule to be, be picking up. This one is a lighter microphone. It's still premium in my personal opinion as far as the build quality and all that stuff goes. But it's going to pick up all those. And that's the problem that I've seen happening with this whole new trend of microphones uh, having this one single yoke we've seen it on the likes of the i would say fine fine am6 but the reason why i never brought that up is because back then my microphone boom arm was on the other side of my desk so i never really had to deal with the i would say the rumblings or anything like that even while testing that microphone and let's say the fine fine am8 and all those other microphones that have just wide yokes i never really had to deal with any um i would say vibrations or issues like that but this one even though it's a dynamic microphone it was still being brought up into the capsule so i do want to make you guys aware of it and that's why i said adding the vsts and plugins because once i start doing that i started noticing something different that i normally don't get on microphones when i use my EQs for live streaming and when I turned them all off I kept hearing this humming kind of buzzing noise or whatever kind of like a refrigerator how loud it was in my headphones and I was like what is this and you know it wasn't so distracting or really noticeable while live streaming and everything but when you have dead silence or wherever and you're talking and you live monitoring you might pick it up so just keep that in mind keep this microphone away from or the microphone boom arm that's attached to this microphone away from vibrations or anything like that because it's going to pick it up with that being said my second con is going to be that price i mentioned it's about 90 dollars or 89 dollars and some cents so what's going to happen is, is that this microphone is now in the realm of other competing microphones out there that are going to be better for content creation if you're going to be a streamer and the reason why i say that is because you have the likes of the elgato microphones the wave ones and the new wave whatever microphone they just came out or wherever those microphones are still overpriced but they do come with the capability of with the usb port having access to something called the wavelength software which i am using right now for vsts and plugins you can have up to nine little audio channels from bringing in your browser source your music your microphone obviously any other usb audio 
interface like the Comica Adcaster C2, I can bring it in there. Um, I could bring in the Fine Fine uh, SC3, stuff like that. And uh, I'm running the, the uh, Elgato Wave XLR right now. But again, those Wave microphones, you can find refurbished, uh, especially the Wave 1 or wherever, for around the same price as this microphone. And like I said, if you're going to be a content creator and you're going to be possibly streaming and you're going to want to adjust, you know, stuff that you're hearing versus what your stream is hearing and all that stuff, it's a really compelling argument to pick the Elgato products over this one. And not to mention the Mayano software that comes with their microphones through their USB port, even though it's very limiting and is not as robust, you can still get limiters, co uh, compressors, you get different EQ curves and stuff like that. Again, it's not very um, customizable wherever or at length as I would say that you get with the Elgato software, but still around the same price of this microphone you can get a dynamic microphone that allows you to do all this stuff through usb and like i said even though gato is yes it's just usb it's not it's not xlr and it's a cardioid uh condenser microphone versus a dynamic microphone so it's going to be a little bit harder to get rid of that echoiness of the room but the capsule is still made by lewitt which is a very very good i would say premium brand uh, microphone uh, company so with all that being said do i still recommend this microphone yes only if you're going to get it for the xlr port if you're going to use this through an xlr interface wherever i still recommend it the only thing that you would have to do is make sure like i said that there's no vibrations or anything like that coming from your desk or anything obviously the microphone's been over here it's away from vibrations and stuff you're not hearing any of that or wherever obviously in my personal opinion the microphone sounds great it looks great it looks premium i would use this on a podcast like if me and my wife had uh, a podcast or did videos in the future or whatever sitting down maybe some reactions or something like that i would use this microphone i think it looks fine being in frame and everything and since the comica adcaster c2 has two xlr ports i would be able to do that the only thing that i would wish as far as changing up or whatever is maybe beefing up those components inside so it doesn't have to deal with those vibrations and on top of that i would also say that if in the future fine fine does this a lot where with their microphones at a later date they usually come out with other color options um this one i think in in white as well as the yoke you know keep keeping yoke because the am8 even in white and pink still has a black yoke so if they can keep if they can somehow get the yoke in white that would be nice but you know if not i understand but if the microphone was in white i think this thing would look phenomenal i think it would it look honestly fine fine kills it with their colors when they do do stuff like that so i would like to see this thing in white if possible as well as i know they'll probably come out with a pink version but fine fine just, just do a little question you know what i'm saying can we get a purple you know i know we have pink i know we have white and traditionally like black and some of their older microphones have extra color colors like navy blue i think as well but can we get a purple color because my wife loves purple and i'm thinking about making her a setup or wherever i've been on and off of whatever talks with her and telling you guys about it i think that would be really cool if i was able to do that um and use a microphone like this in purple that's just a thought you know what i'm saying it just don't just throw an idea out there take it or leave it you know what i mean um but overall like i said i do like this microphone it's just at that price point, yes, it has the combo jack of using USB or XLR if you do want to upgrade to an XLR interface later. Again, this microphone is really good. It's just at this price point, y'all already know, I, I'm completely honest with you guys all the time, regardless of who sent out what. This microphone obviously sounds good. In my personal opinion, it's a little bit better than the Tonar TD510 that we looked at not too long ago. Um, it's right. I like it around the IX Tech microphone as well. That one was around this price point. And I said, you know, keep the price a little bit lower. This one, I would probably pay around $70 for because again, around 80 to 90 to almost $100, you're getting into that realm of companies adding a little bit more through software capabilities to their microphones. And you have a lot of options out there. Like I said, 90 to bucks it's kind of hard to recommend because it's a good microphone so what will win you over is probably the sound of it and the way it looks for that price and if again you have a decent i would say audio interface and you're going to have this on camera and you like look at the microphone like like i said you like the sound of it 
obviously you can't beat it and especially if fine fine does like i said incorporate the colors or whatever as far as white and pink and maybe purple or whatever that would be uh, another reason why to get this microphone because a lot of companies out there are losing out on the customers because they're not doing what fine fine does as far as the colors go because i still use the fine fine k688 that's my favorite microphone from them the shock mount everything just looks premium and really good and that microphone is a little bit cheaper than this one but it does look like a little bit more on the streamer side you know what i'm saying maybe a little podcasty but more so like streamery gamery that's what you expect uh for it to look like or to be in the place of that type of content creation this one is more i would say premium more business oriented looking or whatever more podcasty or whatever even more so than the fine fine k688 that's just my overall thoughts and opinions of it i will leave again down in the description affiliate links to this microphone if you want to pick it up as well as that unlisted video comparing all the other microphones including fine fine microphones against it and if you're interested in my live streams to come talk to me about this microphone or any other product that i have done check out the product review playlist down uh, in the description as well as in the video but also check that live stream out watch those videos and then come talk to me on the live streams again links in the description if you're new to the channel consider subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next one fine fine obviously killed it with this microphone as well but i just i love my k688 i can't get rid of it man so i probably will leave this microphone over here and you probably will see it debut on the channel every now and then when i need to do a shot like this or just converse with you guys so again leave me down in the comments down below what you think of this microphone and i'll catch you guys in the next one y'all take care have a squid day god bless you and yours and deuces everybody much love